The monsoon rains have finally started here in Satara. But it might be too late for a good sugarcane harvest. This region in the western Indian state of Maharashtra is known as the country's sugar bowl. India's goal is self-sufficiency, but with sugar production here down sharply and demand fairly steady, India could have to import as much as one-third of all the sweet stuff it uses. And that's a big change, given that less than two years ago, India, the world's second largest producer of sugar after Brazil, was exporting as much as 20% of its production. The lack of good rains are just one of the many challenges the Indian farmer faces over their counterparts in other countries. The Indian farmer has about three acres as an average holding. And uh, an international farmer would have maybe about a thousand acres as a uh, farm size. And that farmer who has thousand acres can have a lot of automation, mechanical equipment, larger irrigation systems and such, which definitely makes it much more economical for him to grow sugarcane. Due to the shortfall of sugarcane production, the price of raw sugar on the international markets is now about 50% higher than it was at the end of last year. And that's had an impact on the Indian consumer. From syrupy tea to dense sweets to fresh sugarcane juice, sugar is a common ingredient in the Indian diet. The customer felt the pain of the price hikes, and we felt the pain too. We are getting the sugarcane for a higher price now. If it continues like this, we won't be able to afford it anymore. The government has always been trying to ensure that the sugar prices remain sort of stable and sugar is evenly available at a reasonable price to the consumer. Because of this kind of control, the sugar prices have been kind of suppressed in the Indian market. Politicians fear being voted out of office if they support policies that appear to increase prices. And therefore, they try to regulate the price in many ways, including dictating how much sugar can be released into the market every month. As a producer of sugar, I cannot sell the sugar that I have produced at will. I can only sell as much as the government permits me to sell every month. But with no deregulation on the horizon, mill owners are developing other ways to increase profits from sugarcane. Crushed cane fiber, known as bagas, is burned to produce electricity that is sold to the state. Mills have also been adding distilleries to convert molasses, a byproduct of sugar production, into ethanol. The fuel aspect of it will have to be controlled by making sure that uh, not so much of it goes to ethanol. Otherwise, the sugar prices might shoot off. The rates might just go through the ceiling. And uh, this is bound to happen when crude prices rise again. When the rest of the world fretted over high oil prices, Brazilian farmers and companies profited by turning bountiful sugarcane harvests into ethanol. Since fuel prices have come down, they're expected to divert more of their production towards sugar. The Indian sugar market is not yet that flexible. And while policymakers have discussed reducing subsidies, like those for fertilizers, and remove controls over commodities like sugar, the government has made few major changes so far. It's not only about sugarcane, it's about other agriculture producers too. We have been a self-sufficient country so far because a farmer has been looked after. If the farmer isn't looked after and we, if we end up importing our food tomorrow, we're going to have a problem at hand.